Hello everyone and welcome to the Character Making 101 video. The very first thing that we're going to start with here is just a sort of overview and explanation of various statistics and strategies for making your own characters. So two stats that we'd like to focus on first because they seem to give a lot of people trouble is going to be aim and focus. So I'm just going to look at aim first. Aim is good for when you're using ranged abilities. So I've actually given myself a few abilities here. This is not really Magnor, it's just a temporary character. But I have Chop, I have Twang, which is a ranged ability. You can see that two to five there with the green seal means it's ignoring line of sight, which makes it more expensive. And it's two to five range, so, so it's definitely a ranged ability. I'm doing 85 to 177 with it. If I remove my power of aim, I'm now only doing 38 to 80. So you can see the reason for this is that aim is going to reduce the cost of range. So anything that you add to an ability that is making it stronger and range would qualify is going to cost. Aim effectively reduces the cost of range. It won't do anything for one range ability and it won't do anything for an area of effect ability. So focus is going to be just like aim, but for area of effect abilities, you can see that there's a grid of squares on the card. And right now I have all of the squares active around the origin, which is me. This is a zero range ability. And so I'm doing 242 to 363 damage. If I remove that focus, it goes all the way down to 125 to 187. So very simply, if you're going to do area of effect, get focus. If you're going to do range, get aim. If you're not going to get them, then they might work as dump stats, which we'll talk about just a bit. But before we do that, I want to look at the different power types. So power is really what fuels everything. It's literally what makes your abilities do more. However, as you may have already noticed, there are different power types. So we can go power category, we can go power source. The source is the highest differentiation. So we have mundane power and magical power. Then we have elemental, we have physical, and we have energy. And then we have the specifics. So the specific power types, for instance, air, earth, fire, and water are all underneath the elemental category. Whether they're magical or mundane depends on what you want to do. So if you're doing a flamethrower, that's mundane fire. But if you're doing a fireball that's magic, well, that's magical power. So the very important distinction to make here is that every power doesn't matter what power type it is, adds equal power to your ability. However, if I wanted to just work up purely power, I'm going to get less bang for my buck. If I go to the most specific type and I said just air power, I'm gonna gain a lot more air power than I would standard power. So now the thing that we can talk about is that dump stat that we mentioned. And the dump stat is basically going to say, hey, I'm not going to use a certain type of power. I'm not going to use ranged. I'm not going to use X. So whatever that might be, if I'm going over here and I'm just going to say, we're just going to chop. That's all we're doing with this character is the chop character. Well, we have no range. We have no area of effect. But we can come over here and definitely add a major weakness of aim and focus. So what I'm doing effectively is I'm just adding to my other stats by detracting to this from this stat. So I'm right now it's being added pretty much evenly across the board. So my health will go up and my movement might go up and all of these other things might go up. But I can then come over here and say if we're just doing chop, well, it's a slashing powered ability. So I'm going to select slashing power. And so now this chop is starting to get really zesty and I can even continue to add negatives and strengths to make this even more powerful. If I am going to go with a single type of power, like slashing in this case, I'm probably also going to want armor penetration. Armor penetration is going to be great, even though you see that the, the, the strength might go down on the card, it's going to be great against any uh, enemy or any, any target that is going to have defenses against slashing or physical, or even you know mundane in this case, defenses in general. So once you have those statistics, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to echo them in all of your equipment. So let's say that we are going to um, go into the primaries. And I don't know, let's say that we have this mailman masher. This one has a negative of focus. 
So that'd be fine if I'm not going to use any area of effects. If I was going to use an area of effect ability, then maybe I'd want to use aim instead. And of course, you can play around with this. You can have support negatives. You can have uh, healing received negatives. You can have stability negatives. All of these things are, are things that you can use as your negative. But if you want your character to be powerful, you probably have to choose a dump stat and you'd probably echo it on all of these as the, the same negative or vary it. Same would go back over here. You'd want to choose all your negatives and you'd want to choose all your strengths. But you don't have to do that because obviously as you choose more strengths, your strength is divided more into those strengths. And as you choose more negatives, well, of course, you're going to have more negatives. So another thing that sometimes gives a little bit of trouble to some players is going to be how to handle passives. Passives are basically abilities that are only going to target yourself and they're going to execute at the very, very start of your turn. So even if you're disabled, these passives will go off. That's one of the very nice things about passives. However, if you're going to want to do something more complicated, like do an area of effect, you might want to use a command on start to turn. So here's what that might look like. I've turned it into a command. Commands mean that it can trigger on your turn. So that's that little toggle right here. Then I've set the command to on my turn start, target self and explode. Here's the area of effect. You can come see that I've toggled it here. So that would be a way to do an area of effect that happens basically at the start of your turn. This would not happen, however, if you were disabled. If you were going to target someone else, this here won't work because I have no range. So here, at least I would have one range. So if an enemy starts their turn, I target them and I deal 66 fire damage to that enemy if they were literally one tile away from me. But I could dial that up and or down. And what you're looking at here and the reason that that's getting so weak is because we are using Magnor currently to do it and he doesn't have range or firepower. I can select someone with some range or firepower and see that it's going to go up right away. In general, reactions can't happen unless the target of the reaction is within the range of the card. One other thing that we've uh, noticed is going to give some people some problems is that the default state of the character is not going to have too much survivability. If you don't add health, defense, or at least some kind of evasion or some kind of a defense, then you're going to want to add a defensive reaction like a dodge. So you can do that by just simply going into the abilities and looking up dodge, for instance, and adding dodge. So now your survivability is going to come from the fact that you're going to react when any enemy tries to hit you. You're going to dodge backwards. This is one way to have survivability. The other would be, of course, to just add some kind of a stat like defense. And you can work your way into being a tank pretty simply, but don't expect to survive much if you're just going purely offensive. As you add offensive stats, remember that it is going to detract from your defense. Another thing that we'd like to discuss is the difference between power and support. So that's a really tricky one because support is a type of power that adds to everything except damaging and kill abilities. So anything that is not a damage or a kill is helped by support. Power, on the other hand, you would expect, would cover everything. It should add potency to absolutely everything, and it almost does. But the only thing that it doesn't do, basically to avoid infinite scaling, is it doesn't do things like a statistic buff. So if you want to buff power or debuff defense, or even if you wanted to add an imbue, you're going to want to use support instead of power. Other than that, if you're creating something like a summoner that is not going to buff the statistics of their summons or allies, you might just want to consider using a power that is specific. Next, we're just going to talk very briefly about haste. Haste is something that allows you to reduce the cooldowns of an ability. So if an ability has one cooldown, which is the default, it allows you to use it multiple times in one turn. That'll be that little clock that you see there. So now if I add an ability here, Let's say that I did just add that dodge and we'll add a chop and something like a shield bash. You're going to see this little clock come up here on this card. So this card now is going to basically have a 56% chance of being able to be used well two times in the same turn. Now this one has uses on it, so I'd be using it up pretty quick. That's maybe not going to work for a haste build, but every card that I have will benefit from that haste. If you want to do something similar to this, but you don't want to have a haste stat, you can actually have the ability grant itself 
and then in effect you have the chance of having another chop after this chop. But of course it's going to detract from the power of the card. And finally, we're going to take a look at Claire to see how we can maybe potentially kind of go against the grain of the character a little bit. So we're going to inspect her and we're going to see the smite ability. So the smite ability is magical light damage, and that's not going really against her style. But if you notice, she's great with support and she's decent with energy, but she's not really specializing in light damage or energy. She doesn't have armor penetration. She's not an offensive character in general. However, if you've ever used her before, you'll notice that Smite can actually, uh, you know, win one for Claire. So how we're achieving this is through cooldowns, uses, and AP cost. So that's some ways that you can go against the grain of the character. If you wanted to have a mostly support character, but then you wanted to have an offensive ability or vice versa, that's how you can do it. You can do it with cooldowns, uses, and something that you can do here is cumulative conditions. If you added something that, for instance, she would have had to use 5 AP before she could use this, it would make this ability more powerful and it would go with that cooldown. So it's all about strategizing and having synergy. So now that we have a pretty good idea of how to make a character, uh, and if you have any questions, I highly recommend going over to our Discord channel, which will be linked in the description and just asking. There's plenty of people there that can help you out. But now we're going to take a look at these tools here, just because the layout has changed since the last time that we covered them. It's still going to have mostly the same functionality here. You get to add your name, the class. The class is just something that is cosmetic. It doesn't actually change anything. If I made Magnor a warrior or if I made him a berserker, it doesn't matter until I change his stats. It's mostly meant to be informative to the player as to what they're going to do. You can add a playstyle synopsis again to just allow other users to know what to expect from this character and the backstory is also just a history that's cosmetic. Just add it here. Then you get into your strengths. This is your strongest statistic and it works its way down and this is your biggest weakness and it works its way down. We've added tooltips to all of these categories so if you're unfamiliar you can just hover over and see what they do. And as I stated before anytime you add a strength you're basically going to be reducing from all of your other statistics. And when you add a weakness, you're going to be boosting all of your other statistics, but specifically what you decide to be your strengths will be boosted most. The AI controls are here for you in case you want to run AI, but it's also actually going to affect the suggestions so, such as the blue glow of the cards or the green glow. All of these things are affected by that. So you might want to make a Berserker reckless, uh, especially if they're going to have some AOE abilities and you don't mind hitting your allies, you want to make them reckless. The selfishness is basically for any sort of friendly abilities. How much are they going to target themselves versus allies? The abilities are your master ability is going to get 110% of your power and it just goes down to 105 and 100. So there is a slight difference there, uh, but it's not too, too major. I would select that whatever ability you plan on using most or being most pivotal would be your master ability and anything else there would just go down in order. One thing to note about primary equipment is that if you choose a main hand that is two handed, you're going to remove the secondary so you won't even have the secondary. Another thing to note is that whatever you actually choose as your equipment pieces, those are going to be added to the pool of loot that are in any run that includes this character. The visuals here are just basically to change the images of your character. The animation style controls how your character idles and how they move. You can change that as well. And what happens when they die. You can choose their animation style for death as well. Speaker avatar is going to be something that happens only when there is dialogue. They can have their own sounds. They can have their own images for all of the emotions. And of course, their own text sounds that can just be selected right there. The sound is where you're going to select the voice pack for your character. So it can be anything from our list or you can create your own. And then you can set custom vocalizations for each of their abilities. These are going to be abilities contained by equipment or their three innate abilities. Finally, the advanced is to set builds and also to actually add a trailer. If you wanted to add a little trailer here that you've put together, a little YouTube video of your character at play, you can add that here. And whenever you upload it to the workshop, People will be able to watch your character at work so they can know what to expect exactly. The build is just something that's organizational. It's just so that you can 
basically select that this is going to be a build of Magnor or Orin or Claire. And when you do that, that means that the character that you're creating here won't actually show up in the box. You would then select the character of whom this is a build in the character select box and then select the build. So when I select the samurai here, you can see that the little uh, dial beneath it does not change. However, when I select the gambler, you can see that these little runes come up. That means I can switch builds. So now I'm a high roller or I'm just a gambler. And that's how the builds work. I don't see two houses here in the box, so I'm not cluttering my box. I can actually just bring him in or out and then select his build however I like. And the last thing that I'd like to cover is that here in the creation sort of navigation menu, you can view glossary. So anything that you don't understand, let's say that you didn't know what it was meant by the word pass on the ability card. Well, here you can get a little information. You can look up statistics and look at all of the statistics. You'll get as much information as we've provided here. And it's all very easy to search. So that's a great way if you're having any questions to first check this glossary. And then if you don't find the answer there, come on over to Discord, ask us and we're happy to help. And so once you've created your character and you're ready to upload, the buttons for upload and download are right here in this uh, upper left hand corner uh, sort of panel. Um, you can also watch the tutorial videos here, as you may have already known by the fact that you're watching this video, but maybe you're watching it through YouTube. So the capacity to upload to the workshop comes with a lot of different options. You can set your visibility here. Uh, if you want it to be by friends only, by code only, or private, you can do that there. The set visibilities for dependencies, as you can see here, we have hover over tips for everything, but you can basically set it to always. If a visibility is decreased or increased, that's going to make it so that all of the things beneath here, such as abilities, equipment, images, sounds, also have their visibilities set, like your setting for the visibility of the entire object. Mature content flags, this is kind of the same thing. You can set them here and you can set them for dependencies in the same way here. They can be additive or they can override. And this is if you're doing the group based, then you can actually select a bunch of different groups here or just a single group. The download options are very useful if you're trying to get uh, new assets to work with. So if I go to the visuals, this is where I can look for some of those. I might be able to find some sounds that way. And of course, you can look for abilities that way. Finally, there's these edit tags here. You can add tags to your creations just to make them easier to search for. So if it was from some sort of fiction or game or something like that, you might want to add the tag there so people can easily find it.